Hey guys, welcome to our movie recap. Today we're going to recap a film from the year 1994 titled Stargate. Before we start, remember to like and subscribe for more awesome movie recaps. The movie begins in 8000 BC in ancient Egypt. Everyone is sleeping when suddenly an alien spaceship shaped like a pyramid comes from the sky. Everyone in the village runs away except one teenage boy that approaches the pyramid and a bright light shines on him. In 1928, archaeologist Dr. Langford and his young daughter Catherine arrive at the Pyramids of Giza after he was told about a new finding. The local digger takes him to the site of the new findings and shows him a massive stone ring. They also find stone tablets that have ancient hieroglyphs and a necklace with the Eye of Ra, the sun god, carved into it. We're now in 1994. Catherine is a very old woman, and she's dedicated her life to finding out what the use of those tablets and the ring is for. We see her arrive at a symposium and get into a class taught by Dr. Daniel, who's a linguist and historian focusing on ancient Egypt. Daniel is arguing that the pyramids were not built by the pharaohs, but everyone in his class doesn't buy his theories, and they make fun of him. After the class, Daniel is approached by Air Force agents, and they bring him to Catherine. She then offers him a job in the Air Force to work as a translator, and he agrees to do the job. Meanwhile, General West, who's leading the research, sends two men to Colonel Jack's home. Jack has just lost his son due to a gun accident. His son accidentally shot himself. We see him depressed in his son's room and contemplating suicide. Two men tell him that West has reactivated him for an important job. The next day, Daniel arrives at a secret US base. He meets up with Catherine and two of her associates who have been working on the tablet for two years. They show him their work and Daniel immediately starts making corrections on their translations of the hieroglyphics. While making his translation, Daniel comes to the word Stargate. But before the others tell him about it, Jack arrives at the lab and announces that he's now in charge of the project and that most things are now classified. Daniel then works on just the tablet for two weeks and discovers something massive. The crew, including General West and Jack, also come to see his discovery. Daniel starts by explaining that the six symbols on the tablet represent a location in space. He then tells them he only needs the seventh symbol, which will represent Earth, so he can accurately find the location. Everyone's impressed by his findings, and Wes decides to show him the stone ring, which is actually a portal called a Stargate. The Stargate is covered by ancient hieroglyphics, and the team have been trying to find the symbol that represents Earth and put it in the correct order to light up the portal. Daniel then looks at it for a few seconds, and figures out the symbol for Earth. He then tells them the correct combinations, and when they enter those symbols to the Stargate, a portal opens. The team then sends a rover into the portal to investigate the other side. They track the rover's location, and it comes up in the Kalam galaxy, which is the opposite side of our galaxy. The rover also confirms something fascinating. The planet it's in is habitable for humans. The portal then shuts off seconds after, but within that time, the rover sends some images, and it reveals another stargate on the other side also. But the symbols on the other side are different. Because of this, West is hesitant to send people through the portal, since they won't be able to return if they can't figure out how to light that portal on the other side. Daniel then confidently states that he can figure out the symbols on the other side. So, West agrees to send a team through the portal. Jack will be leading a team, and he gets a special secret mission from West. Before Daniel leaves, Catherine gives him her necklace and tells him it will bring him good luck. Then, Daniel and Jack and some other soldiers get into the portal again. When they enter the portal, we see them travel through space and time and wake up on another planet. They find themselves in a building, Inside, there's only the Stargate, so they walk outside and they see they're in the middle of a desert. They turn to look what they came out of, and it's revealed to be a giant pyramid. Daniel then informs the team the stone tablet with the combination is missing, 
so he needs to search the area more to find it. Everyone gets mad at him as they fear they're going to be permanently stuck here, but Daniel is confident that he'll find it. While the team sets camp outside the pyramid, Daniel goes for a walk and finds a desert animal. He sees the animal has a harness on it, so he figures out it's friendly. He then slowly approaches it and feeds it a chocolate bar. Jack then arrives at the area and startles the animal. The animal then runs away, but Daniel's leg gets caught in the harness, so he also gets dragged all the way down. The animal then stops at a hill, and when the team sees over the hill, they see a mining site filled with humans. Jack then takes two soldiers and Daniel with him, and they approach the mining site. The people there immediately bow down to Daniel when they see his necklace. A teenage boy named Skara tries to talk to them, but he's talking in a language that they don't understand. Daniel thinks the language is some kind of ancient Egyptian language, but he's not sure. Skara then rushes to bring his father Kasuf, who is the leader, and Kasuf, using sign language, asks them to follow him. He then leads them to his town and shows them a drawing of the Eye of Ra. Daniel figures out that the people here worship Ra, and since he's wearing a necklace with the carving of Ra, the people think that he's sent by the god. A massive sandstorm suddenly arrives, and the team is forced to hide in Kasuf's home. Daniel and the team get served a nice meal, and Daniel gets better at communicating with the people too. Then at night, the village people take Daniel to a room, and shortly after, Kasuf's daughter Shaare comes in to have sex with him. He stops her from taking her clothes off and talks to her about Ra. Shaori recognizes what Daniel is talking about and asks him to come with her. Meanwhile, the team that was camping outside of the pyramid was forced to rush back inside because of the sandstorm. Then at night, we see the pyramid-shaped spaceship appear out of nowhere and land surrounding the pyramid. The soldiers hear the sound and decide to investigate. But before they could do so, Ra's soldiers ambush them and capture them. Back in the village, Shaori takes Daniel into a ruin with writings about Ra's origins. Ra was an alien hailing from a dying planet. He managed to escape his planet and started looking for a way to extend his own life. On his travels, he finds a planet filled with life, Earth. Humans were primitive at the time, but Ra figures out he can use them to extend his life. He descends on Earth looking for a suitable host, and he possesses the body of the teenage boy we saw when the movie began. Human cells were easy to repair, so Ra used the boy's body as a vessel, and using the Stargate, he brought some humans to this planet so that they could mine the rare minerals that keep him alive. But Ra's plan didn't go perfectly, as humans back on Earth rebelled against his rule and broke the Stargate on Earth. Because of this, Ra only has the people on his planet. He decides to ban them from writing so that they can't become educated and rebel against his slavery. After learning this, Daniel tells Jack and the crew to return to the pyramid. Some of the villagers, led by Skara, also follow the crew without being seen. The crew see the spaceship pyramid, so they rush into it to find the other soldiers. Skara and his team don't get into the pyramid though. Rather, they find the campsite of the soldiers and take the guns and return to the village. In the pyramid, Daniel and the team start looking around for their team members but they're also ambushed and captured. Daniel and Jack are then taken directly to Ra. Ra sees the necklace on Daniel and figures out they're from Earth. He then accuses them of trying to kill him, and when Daniel tries to deny it, Ra brings out a bomb that Jack had planted in the pyramid. Turns out Jack's special mission was to blow up the Stargate if he found a threat and no one else knew about it. Ra is now mad, thinking the bomb was to kill him, so he sends two fighter jets to the village to punish them for helping the soldiers. We then see the jets go over the village and kill a lot of people. Skara reaches the village just after the destruction. He finds Shaori holding a dead kid. She then tells him to come with her to the ruins and tells him what Daniel told her. Back in the pyramid, Jack tries to escape and he gets a hold of Ra's weapon, but he doesn't succeed and Daniel gets shot during the shootout. He then gets caught and brought to the prison, 
where he gets reunited with the other soldiers. Daniel is dying, but Ra brings him to his special tomb, where he gets his cells regenerated and Daniel is fully healed. Ra then tells Daniel that he'll punish Earth by sending the bomb back to them, but he'll inject it with a special mineral that will make the bomb 100 times more destructive. Later that day, Ra calls all the village people to the outside of the pyramid. He's planning an execution of Jack to show his authority, and he's planning to force Daniel to do the killing so that people see that Daniel is his subordinate. At the execution ceremony, Daniel is given a weapon in order to kill Jack, but in the crowd, he sees Skara and Shaori giving him a signal, so he turns the weapon and shoots it at the guards, which creates a distraction and lets him and Jack escape. The crew meets up with a militia that Skara has created. Then, later that day, they return to the pyramid to fight back and get their freedom. Skara's army distracts Ra's army by fighting them outside, while Shaori, Jack, and Daniel sneakily enter the pyramid and make it to the Stargate room. Jack then sets up the bomb and starts a 7 minute timer while Daniel gets ready to open the portal. But before he could set up the portal, Ra's soldiers ambush them and he shoots Shaori. Jack manages to take him out, but Shaori is dying. Daniel then grabs her and takes her to the special tomb to heal her. But Ra was also in the room, and he attacks Daniel using his powers. But before he could kill him, Daniel uses a teleporter and goes back to the Stargate room. The timer now only has two minutes, so Jack tries to stop it, but the bomb is rigged and it doesn't stop. Meanwhile, Ra starts his ship and takes it outside the planet as his army's losing. But as his ship is lifting off, Daniel and Jack use the teleporter to send the bomb into his ship and it detonates in space, killing Ra. Everyone celebrates when they see the explosion and Daniel and Shaori kiss on the lips. In the last scene, the crew are entering the portal. Daniel has decided to stay on this planet with Shaori, so he gives the necklace to Jack and they say their goodbyes. So it looks like Daniel and Shaori got the happily ever after they deserved. But what do you think about Ra? Was he an epic supervillain? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video, remember to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more movie recaps. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.